Hey, how you doing? Justin here. Today, I'm going to take you through an awesome exercise that's going to help you target individual strings while you're strumming. It's something I get asked about all the time, particularly as you get into doing chord embellishments. You very often want to target a particular note within a chord while you're strumming. Now, it does take a little bit of practice, but I'm going to take you through two exercises that I think you're going to find really super helpful. We keep returning back to the bass note of the chord, which is also important for lots of different things when you're alternating bass parts or being able to pick out the bass note of a chord individually really really great thing uh, and then learning how to target the individual picks particularly with the up strums and we're going to be focusing on the thinnest strings to start off with because most commonly that's where you're going to put chord embellishments which are usually the notes that you want to pick out and or if you're picking out the melody of a song or you're trying to create a little bit of a kind of melodic motif within your strumming uh, these things are uh, you know usually found on the thinner string so uh, without any more chat let's get to a close-up and I'll explain the exercise. So hold down a C chord to start off with and we're going to do a down strum, an up strum, then we're going to do another down strum, then we're going to play the thinner string, the fifth string in this case that's the root note, the second string with an up pick back to the root note, the third string with an up pick back to the root note, second string, root note, Thinner string, root note, second string, down, up. Okay, again. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. The strum that you put at the beginning and the end of the sequence is really, really important. It's going to put you in strumming mode. If you don't add that in, there's a danger that it'll become a little bit too rigid. Uh, there are times where you would want to do a kind of a rigid and very, very super accurate picking pattern where the anchor would stay stationary if you're doing a probably going to want to keep a very rigid anchor and it's it's very much kind of like a pick accuracy exercise with strumming there's another element which is this loose relaxed feeling that you should have when you strum so this exercise this way is potentially a little less accurate but it should feel nicer and when you're strumming a song when you've got that going on it's got to maintain that kind of relaxed feel we're just trying to get some accuracy within that relaxed framework so start with that down strum, up strum, down strum, thinner string, fifth, second string, fifth, third string, fifth, second string, fifth, thinner string, fifth, second string, down, up. Start off just with the C chord and when you're feeling confident maybe move to trying an A minor chord which is exactly the same picking pattern because the root note is on the fifth string still. When you're happy with both of those maybe have a go at doing an F chord or a G chord. F chord if you're feeling confident with that bar chord, G chord if you're not. The difference with it, let's do it on a G chord for now, uh, the difference would be that the root note is now on the thicker string. So we're going to have on the G chord, down, up, down, up, bass. There's a little bit more of a jump. The sequence for that G and the F chord are exactly the same. A really nice way of putting this into a kind of a musical example would be to do that whole pattern on the C chord, the A minor chord, and F and a G. It's just a very common chord sequence. Of course, you could change that order up if you want. doesn't really matter. The nice one about this is that you're doing the two with the fifth string uh, root right after each other, and then the two with the sixth string root right after each other, which is useful to change. We'll talk about that just in a sec, but let me just demonstrate that for you. So starting off on the C chord. A minor.
course, you can change up this pattern whenever you want, make up your own. I'd encourage you to do that. But at the beginning, I think it's worth having a set pattern. Uh, it is also fine just to kind of make it up as you go along and, and pick out random notes kind of thing. But that is in some ways harder than it is to have a set pattern. So I'd recommend that you practice a set pattern first of all. When you feel confident, you might start trying to change it up a little bit and make it up your own patterns. But also important is what to do if you get just one bar. So for one bar, I would recommend that you start off with this pattern. Again, it's starting off on the C chord. So start with the down strum, then thinner string, root, second string, root, third string, down, up. So one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. If your confidence is growing and you're finding that pretty easy, another little variation you might like to try is doing the first up pick on the third string. So going third string, second string, first string, down, up. Okay, so down strum. Third string, second string, first string, down, up, down, third string, second string, first. An even bigger challenge would be to change between those two things. So start with the thinner string the first time round and the third string the second time round. So going down, thinner string, second string, third string, down, up, down, third, second, thinner string. Now this is a one bar pattern. If you want to get really funky with it, the sequence to try it will be C, G, A minor, F, of which there are gazillions of songs that use that particular chord sequence. Now we've got the bass note moving, so it'll be from the fifth string to the thickest string to the A minor, which is the fifth string root to the F. G A minor F If you want to take it another step you could always do uh, strings 1, 2 and 3 on the C and then 3, 2, 1 on the G 1, 2, 3 on the A minor 3, 2, 1 on the F so you'd have this Once you get confident with this idea of picking out notes individually, it becomes a very, very cool tool that you can add to your regular strumming patterns. Now, I've so far just been talking about doing like strings one, targeting strings one, two, three, or three, two, one, or a set pattern there. But remember, it can also be melodic. So you might end up targeting I don't know, the second string a couple of times and then the thinner string. You might, I don't know, here's a little example I'll make up uh, just on the a little riff on the A minor. Now that was just like using an embellishment, using an A sus4 on the on that and, a, and an F6. But what I'm trying to get at is that you can end up using it to pick out melody notes or making a little motif within your playing and you should experiment with that. It shouldn't always just be a, a very set pattern that you do all the time. Again, I want it to be relaxed so it might not happen all the time. You might be strumming regular and you might just have Here. 
again, sometimes it's nicer to use these kind of effects in between the vocal lines. You, you don't necessarily want to be busy all the time on the guitar, particularly if it's going to get in the way of the vocal. I nearly forgot. Poor old D and F, the chords with the fourth string root. Little F, that is. Big F has the root note on the thicker string, but little F would have the root note on the fourth string. But D chord is a particularly good chord for embellishments. I didn't use it as the main part of the lesson just because we had a nice chord sequence there with the C, G, A minor, and the F. Uh, but it works perfectly well with the D. Of course, the chord is a little smaller. So uh, in some ways, there's kind of it's a little easier because the pick end doesn't have to move so much. Uh, the, the, the outer boundaries are a little closer together. But it also means that it sometimes, uh, particularly picking out notes on the third string, feels a little bit uh, awkward uh, just because they are so close together. But if we uh, have a look at a D chord, if I show you that first pattern there on the D. Works just as well for D minor as well. If you experimented a little bit with this idea of uh, picking downs and then up strums and maybe some embellishments like using the D minor with a sus2 and a sus4. Um Sounds kind of familiar, kind of black. But anyway, you get the idea. So this is exactly this down pick and then using your up pick to pick out a melody. It's loads of fun. So I would recommend that you have some time where you specifically work on it like it's an exercise. But as well, see if you can find some songs where you can incorporate it, where you can put it to practical use. It's something I talk about quite often because it's really important. If you leave it as an exercise, it's going to remain an exercise and you'll only use it when you specifically think of it. Whereas if you can incorporate the idea into just targeting a few notes, embellishments to chords particularly work really great with this in songs that you know already, that you're already confident with. That's how you kind of work it into your playing, how you can knead it all together. So just when you play, it'll happen without it being a, oh, I need to do that. And then you can actually do it consciously. It never, it's never kind of as musical that way. You want to keep on working it into things that you already know so it just becomes part of your guitar vocabulary when you sit down to play a tune. It is a really nice one for kind of upper beginners and early intermediate guitar players where you're starting to learn about chord embellishments and uh, experimenting with chord shapes. And when you're experimenting with a chord shape, adding an extra note or taking one away, then it can be really nice to target that with the pick. Um, obviously at this stage we've only looked at using the up picks, but you can of course when you're strumming a down strum you're going to hear that embellishment anyway the the doing a down picked embellishment is a little uh, trickier and we're going to explore that a little bit further down the way for now i'd stick with these patterns explore it by any means explore using down picked embellishments as well if you want i just don't want to go too deeply into that because there's you get some complexities as far as where you're going to hit the bass note and stuff more on that a little later i promise i uh, hope you enjoy it i'll see you for plenty more very soon if you haven't checked out the rest of the grade three module it's steaming along loads of interesting stuff so do go and check that out on the website if you haven't already have a fantastic day and i'll see you for plenty more very soon bye bye